I'm Sierra Mosquito and I am the founder and director of the Shimmer Sparkle Shine project. I am wanting to share eight very important and memorable moments to the history of the Shimmer Sparkle Shine project because this February marks eight years since we hosted our first workshop. So the first moment that I want to share with you goes back to that first workshop that we had in 2012. We organized our first workshop in downtown Denver at, at the YMCA and everybody there was moved to tears because of this message that we were sharing with the, with the young girls. It's kind of hard to describe how impactful it was unless you were there. And that was when I knew what my life purpose and cause was, and that was to create the Shimmer Sparkle Shine Project. The second biggest moment for the Shimmer Sparkle Shine Project was when we developed our five keys. For those of you who don't know, our five keys serves as the basis for our curriculum that we do in our classes and in our workshops. Prior to the summer of 2012, the few workshops that we had done were different activities each time and we were trying to find the best method and way to teach the message of self-worth to these young girls. And when I really sat down and thought about what are the important things that we need to drive home to them, the five keys came to mind. These five keys are personality, good friends versus bad friends, healthy living, comfort in your own skin, and making your mark. So coming in at number three on our top eight countdown is our workshop that we had in Boise, Idaho in the fall of 2015. Prior to that point, we had never had a workshop outside of Colorado. And so the idea of going somewhere new to share our message was exciting. This was only made possible by somebody who came, who came across us in the, during that summer on Instagram. During the summer of 2015, we had a huge Instagram exposure and, and we're getting a lot of people wanting us to share our message with girls in their local area. So this one per particular person raised enough money and support for us to go to Boise, Idaho and host a workshop, which that workshop was the best wor workshop I have ever been to for the Shimmer Sparkle Shine project. Everybody was so welcoming in Boise and so open to our idea and the support we received was overwhelming. We had newscasters there. We had a big catering business donating food to the girls at our, at our workshop. We had over 50 girls sign up. That is the largest turnout we have ever had. We had so many parents eager to help us further. It was honestly the dream. And that workshop, I was like, oh my goodness, this idea of self-worth and what our organization does is something beyond just where where it all started in Colorado. It's something so much bigger. And so that was a big important moment and realization for both myself and the rest of the Shimmer Sparkle Shine project team. At our first workshop, the towards the end of my junior year, so that senior year was when I started filling out the 501c3 paperwork, which I was really busy at that time. And plus, I did not understand half of that IRS paperwork because let me tell you, the IRS does not make it easy to want to help people. And I did not understand it, which I don't even think the average adult understands what the IRS is saying half the time. So I got help from a, lo a local attorney and she helped me understand some, some, some of the jargon and what the requirements were, what they wanted. And um, I, throughout that year, filled out the paperwork and then we sent it off in August of 2013 before I left for college. Um, and then right after I sent it in, the government shutdown of 2013 happened, which I think was a month long, which delayed everything and put things behind, which of course would happen to me. If you knew me, you'd be like, of course that happened. And so getting the, um, the approval back took way lo longer than it said it would. And then in May, of 2014 we received this glorious letter in the mail saying that we were an official 501c3 which meant our donations were tax deductible um, which meant more people would want to actually help us out and i was like wow this is really becoming an official thing and it was a really sweet moment um, so that was definitely a big moment for us in the summer of 2016 um, a fellow board member came to me and she said, you know, we've been doing our workshops for a few years, but I really want us to develop something that would allow us to get to know the girls more than just one time. 
because our workshops are a one-time event that happen for four hours on a Saturday. And then we send the girls on their way and we never see them again. And so we really wanted to create something that would allow us to have a more lasting relationship and have our message hit home with them more. And so she was like, I really think we should do a class series. And so this um, fellow board member, Ashley, spent time developing a class series for us. And since then we have developed and tweaked it. And now we have a fully functioning class series that allows us to see the girls more than just one time for four hours. And it allows us to dive deeper into our message as well. So we see the girls once a week for six weeks for one hour. And we really are able to develop lasting relationships with them. And that also allows them to come to both our workshop and our class series because the message is the same and they both go over our five keys, but they have different activities at um, each one. So it really allows a second option to be able to share our message with these girls um, for a lot longer of a time and more impactfully as well. Our sixth most influential event was the first brunch fundraiser that the Shimmer Sparkle Shine project had in Denver in the summer of 2015. As I mentioned earlier with the Boise workshop, that summer our Instagram presence grew exponentially, like by the thousands. And so we um, had our brunch at my old Taekwondo studio, which it had bright yellow, bright red, and bright blue flooring, but it was perfect because it was free and we did not have the money to pay for space. Um, we had food donated and things for our gift bags donated. And then we invited our friends and family, um, our coworkers, and then we posted about it on social media. Well, I knew that a few friends and family would come because they support what we do. And, you know, I was excited, but I'm like, I really hope new people come. Cause that, that, that's the whole point, right? To share more about what we do. And then before I knew it, there were people showing up who nobody knew. And how do they hear about us? Through Instagram. And it was really impactful to be like, wow, these random people support what we do enough to come spend their Saturday morning with us. And it was also a big um, mind, it was a big eye opener to the power that social media has. That it's not just a tool for showing off your greatest new purchase or for lying about how great your life is. There really is a lot of good that can be done through social media. And this and that brunch really demonstrated that to us. Our seventh most influential moment was our Self-Worth Awareness Day campaign of 2016. You see, Self-Worth Awareness Day used to be a social media campaign that we did during the month of Fe February to basically celebrate the organization, but to also spread our message further on social media, which we no longer do that anymore because we spend more of our time into our classes and workshops. But what? But when we did this, it was a great thing. And um, that year for the campaign, we prompted people to post a picture of themselves using our hashtag and have them say what self-worth means to them. And the response was overwhelming. We had professional photographers on the East Coast doing free photo sessions with young girls and, and um, asking them what self-worth meant to them and sharing it with us. We had people in Kenya doing it. We had my favorite author, she did it too, which to me, I was hardcore, hardcore fangirling. It was really exciting. And we had hundreds of people sharing what self-worth meant, meant to them all over their social media. We did not expect that kind of response for our little social media campaign, but it really took off and allowed our message to be shared to so many more people, to all the friends of the people who took part in it, to start thinking about what self-worth meant to them. And once again, demonstrated how social media can be used as a powerful tool and a force for good. In spring of 2017, I graduated college and moved to Salt Lake City, Utah. And at that time, the base of the Shimmer Sparkle Shine project moved, moved from Denver to Salt Lake City as well. And so a lot of time has been spent since then kind of rebuilding up the organization to be to be prevalent and have a presence here in Utah, which it's actually been a little harder than I thought it would be. Um, there's been a lot of hurdles and jumps, but we recently had a win that really um, was a great moment for us and really reinforced that Utah is our home. Um, and that was when the Shimmer Sparkle Shine project was recently spotlighted in the Mill Creek newsletter. 
we were organizing our first fundraiser brunch out here in Utah and I was emailing local representatives um, all throughout the Salt Lake Valley asking them if they would like to come to our brunch fundraiser to learn more about what we do. And I had sent this invitation to one to a few of the Mill Creek City Council women inviting them. And Mill Creek is where I live. Let me put that out there. And um, I got an email back from one of the city council women and she forwarded it on to the person who takes care of the city newsletter. And she called me saying, hey, can we spotlight the Shimmer Sparkle Shine project in our weekly newsletter? I was like, yeah, sure, that's fine. I sent her what she wanted and I was under the impression she was just putting a flyer for our brunch fundraiser in the newsletter. While well, I'm sitting on my laptop and my husband goes, you might wanna look at the Mill Creek newsletter. I was like, oh, I already know that, that like they put a, fl a flyer in there. And he's like, no, you really want to look at it. So I go and I go into my email and I pull it up and there was my face, which I'm like, whoa, that's me. First thing you see when you open up the newsletter. And then it was a, followed by a huge spotlight into what the Shimmer Sparkle Shine project does. And because of that, we got more brunch ticket sales. We had random um, donations coming in. We had people wanting to volunteer and we had more girls signed up for our workshops. And it was really a great thing to know that the community that I have lived in since I moved to Utah, and that really means a lot to me, has is supporting what I spend my life doing and that Mill Creek supports the Shimmer Sparkle Shine project. And that this su support that I feel in Mill Creek is not just limited to this area, that there is so much potential here in Salt Lake City and that, or just in Utah in general, and that we're finally getting our foot in, in the door to start making that huge impact. And it was great to see that support and that um, success that came from that newsletter. While I only shared eight impactful moments, there were so many more to choose from and it was really hard to narrow down to just eight. I have seen firsthand how the Shimmer Sparkle Shine project has really enhanced the lives of so many young, uh, young girls and made a difference in how they feel about themselves. Because we believe the way that you Shimmer Sparkle Shine is by truly embracing your self-worth and the things that make you, you. And so thank you again for supporting us and allowing us to, to, to teach this message to your young girls and to your daughters and granddaughters and for letting us be a part of your life. It wouldn't be possible without your support. And thank you to all volunteers in the future and the past who spend so much time working on the Shimmer Sparkle Shine project.